Hi everyone, I'm Jen Kalea. I'm a writer and literary translator from German and today I'm going to be reading my sample translation or at least the opening of my sample translation of Helena Bukowski's new novel Die Kriegerin or The Warrior. I translated Bukowski's debut novel uh, Milchsena which was published as Milk Teeth by Unnamed Press in the US um, and The Warrior is about uh, a special friendship between two women whose top priority is to strip themselves of all vulnerability. Uh, Bukowski tells of the resulting wounds, the violence, their traces and the trauma both experienced and inherited. So um, here I am reading from the opening of Die Kriegerin or The Warrior. Lisbeth woke with a start. The darkness was so dense that she didn't know whether she had her eyes open or closed. She groped for the bedside table, found her mobile, held it in front of her face. The screen glowed brightly. For a moment, Lisbeth couldn't see anything. She squinted. 3.30. Malik sighed in his sleep, rolling over towards her. Between them lay the child, quietly breathing, sleeping deeply. Lisbeth threw back the covers, got out of bed, slid on her slippers, put on a jumper, left the room, walked down the dark corridor, put on the lamp in the kitchen. In the light, she examined her arms. Her skin was raw, the crooks of her arms blood smeared. She checked her fingernails, picked scabs out from under them, put water on to boil, spooned instant coffee into a cup. In the bathroom mirror, she saw that she had scratched at her neck as well. She had a cold shower, washed the blood from her body, carefully dried herself, put on lotion, but the skin wouldn't stop burning. Back in the kitchen, she drank coffee, ate a slice of toast, put on her lilac coloured puffer jacket and left the flat. She had parked the flower shop van in a side street under a linden tree that was already losing its leaves. Lisbeth scooped a few from the windscreen, got in the car, started the engine. The streets were empty, she made swift progress. She'd put the radio on so low that she couldn't understand what was being discussed, only able to make out a low murmur. There wasn't much going on at the wholesale market yet. The scent of flowers filled the hall. Lisbeth's movements became more relaxed. She went around all the stands systematically, reaching for flowers, checking their stability, haggling, handing over money, chatting about the weather. After she'd got everything on the list, she stowed away the flowers in the van and smoked a cigarette in the car park, leaning against the vehicle's cool metal. A siren rang out, cutting through the night. Lisbeth smelled burning, looked around, believed for a moment that she was standing in a downpour of ash, blinked. It was instantly silent. She rubbed her arms, increasing the pressure. Damn, she cursed, shaking out her hands, resisted the compulsion to scratch, threw the cigarette away and climbed into the van. Lisbeth drove out of the city, parked by a canal, walked through the high weeds. Leaves and burdocks clung to her trousers. She took her jackknife out of her jacket pocket, cutting rib grass, wild beaked parsley, golden oat grass, a few slow twigs by the light of her phone. Slowly, the itching waned. On the horizon, the first strips of light were visible. As she drove back into the city, the sun rose. Red glowed in her rearview mirror. The forest, the florist was near the spree. Lisbeth could smell the water that day. She parked the van on the embankment and carried the flowers and the cut weeds to the shop, distributed them among the enamel buckets, removed what had withered overnight, wrote out new prices on signs, reviewed the orders, arranged the pots and plants out front and extended the awning. It remained a quiet day. Only a few people came into the shop and bought flowers. Lisbeth's hand smelled of pistachio green. She had made several bunches of flowers using the grasses from the canal and frequently went out into the backyard to sit on a discarded chair and smoke. In the afternoon, the owner of the shop called, passed on the wishes for the arrangements for a wedding, hung up without saying goodbye. Lisbeth wrote a list, swept the off-cut leaves and stems that had accumulated into a thick layer on the floor during the course of the day, changed the water in the buckets, filed the receipts, put the key to the van in the till and smoked a final cigarette before bringing it in all the pots from outside back in, wound in the awning, wrapped one of the bunches with the grasses and twigs from the canal and paper, 
and clamped it under her arm. At six, she closed the door of the florist, held the bouquet over her head. She felt the weight of her hands, the raw skin, the cuts, shoved her fingers deep into the pocket of her puffer jacket and walked under the already almost bare sycamores along the pavement. Under her feet vibrated the U-Bahn.